Uh, my name is Andrew Niprashk and this is uh, Gestures Technology. I did a presentation on this last year. It was different than the one I'm doing now. Had a lot more people last year though. I guess uh, FX has kind of eclipsed my project since they decided to go ahead and add multi-touch. There's going to be a session on that later on tonight. I'm excited to go and see what it's all about. Um, I hope you guys go too. So <clears throat> just a little bit quick stuff about me. I, I work for uh, the government, the Department of Defense, but under that I have several bosses including ONR which stands for the Office of Naval Research and um, NAVC where we build weapons which I can't talk about. So <clears throat> let's just not go there. However, NAVC makes me stick their sticker on everything I do too, since they pay half my salary. All right, so let's talk about what, uh, what we're going to talk about today. This, first of all, we're, we're going to discuss why I'm here, what brought me here, the path that led me to, to where I'm standing now. Then we're going to talk about what makes a gesture, all the different parts and pieces. Uh, we're going to go into a, a great tool. It's called the MT4J, which stands for Multi-Touch for Java. We'll get into that. We'll look at a little bit of code. Uh, I'll try not to blow anybody's mind. It's pretty easy. Then I'll talk about some research that I've been doing and um, HSI, which stands for Human Systems Integration. Um, so <clears throat> I'm just a regular schmo, but I like to open my mouth at the government, and so they keep promoting me and giving me people underneath me. And uh, some of the people that, that work underneath me, even though I only have a bachelor's degree, they all have PhDs in, in um, uh, head shrinks. They're all head shrinks. In fact, I call them my pack of head shrinks. I have three of them. And they do the HSI part, and they explain it all to me. It's much better this year than it was last year when I only had one head shrink working for me. So we'll get into that. I think you guys will find it interesting. Then we'll talk a little bit about what you guys can do have a quick summary and questions and answers. I was going to have a, a demo, but unfortunately my, my laptop, it doesn't have a keyboard. It's two touch screens. And when you plug in a projector, it apparently takes one of my screens away, which means I lost my, my keyboard. So uh, that makes things a little difficult, even though I do still have touch screen capability on, on the one screen. And I cannot get internet here. So both of those things are, are combined to mean no demo. Sorry. I'll show, you where, I'll show you where you can go to get it, though. All right. So let's move on. So this is what happened. I was working for, for the, the weapons part on something that I can't really talk about. And they wanted me to, to build this panel that went in a space where they didn't have room for a keyboard and mouse. I was like, OK, no problem. We'll just put a touch screen in. Seems like a great solution, right? So I got a bunch of touch screens and started playing around with it and quickly discovered that touch screens are really lousy replacements for mice and keyboards. They don't work well. Um, for example, some of the things that, that we had problems with are, are sliders, little slider bars. They had to be three times wider than normal in order to get above 95% accuracy on, on getting it. Now, the stuff I work on is, is pretty, uh, pretty important stuff. That accuracy level, when people are getting shot at, is just not, you know, if somebody's getting shot at and they have to try three times to get a, a scroll bar to go, they're not going to be happy. And since they know how to kill people, I didn't want them coming after me. So, <clears throat> um, so I realized, hey, okay, there has to be a solution to this. Well, about that time, I, I got my first smartphone. Love it. Love my smartphone. I don't know how I ever lived without it. But I realized, hey, this gestures thing, that could be our solution. So I started looking around to see, hey, are there any gestures stuff out there that I could use? At that time, there wasn't. Now there is through FX, apparently, as we just found out yesterday. Um, but at that time, there wasn't any other solutions to... to put gestures on, on a, a regular touch screen through just about any of the code, the languages, the coding languages. So that was a big problem. Um, there wasn't a way to fix it. There was no easy way to fix it. So again, I have a big mouth. I decided to go to my superiors and say, hey, we got to get somebody to pay for, uh, for me to find a fix for this and we can apply the fix to everyone. 
And then I said, oh, and let's make it available to everyone, even the civilians, because it's good PR, right? I mean, you guys like it when we, when we show that we're using our, our tax dollars for good things, am I right? So they were like, okay, we have this one program, you'll have to give a huge presentation in front of a, really, a lot of really important people and see if you win it. Um, so I went there, they had uh, a lot of really high ranking people, a lot of really important people, um, some congressmen, and uh, I had to give a presentation. I was sweating. There was a lot of other people that were there that people were shaking while they were giving their presentations. It was pretty intense. And they only had um, several million to spend and I got about half of the money. So everybody agreed with me that this was a, was a good problem and needed a fix and I got tagged to do it. So that's what led me here kind of in a nutshell. So I went with that money and set up a project. Now before I get much further into that, let's, let's talk about some definitions so that we're all on the same page. There are there's several different types of, of touch. There's single touch and multi-touch. Um, I don't know if any of you work in the government, but the government likes to be 10 years behind. We don't like to be cutting edge anymore. We're always exactly what was cutting edge 10 years ago. So single touch was cutting edge 10 years ago, so that's what they kind of are pushing me towards. Even though I keep trying to tell them that's dumb, let's do multi-touch. It's a long story. But anyways, single touch is when you have one point of contact. So if you just touch a surface with one finger and do something, that's called a single touch gesture. Then there's multi-touch gestures where you can have two to a hundred, whatever. This machine on each screen will take 18 touch points on each screen. I have one machine, that, or t one large touch screen back in my office that's uh, 32 inches and it takes 38 touches. Yes, I tried it. I got all of my, all my friends at the office. We all got together and touched it all at the same time to, to test and see how many points it will take. You can't do anything with more than five, I found out. So I don't know why they have that many, but I did a lot of, a lot of research on this. So, and a gesture is a recognizable pattern of touch movements that are used for, uh, for user input. So things like, like a drag or a flick, things that we're, that we're all familiar with, pinch to, to shrink a screen or to zoom, those types of things. Even taps and double taps are gestures. A lot of people don't realize that. So let's talk about some challenges I had. As I, as I discussed earlier, there are no, everybody who made gestures so far says, hey, there's big money in this, I'm keeping it close. So for instance, the Apple people, you cannot get their gesture code for anything. Sure, you could use it if you buy an Apple product, but you cannot have it. Same with, uh, with Google, Google's a little bit better about it, but I mean, Google paid three, what was it, three billion dollars to, to have to, to Oracle a year ago. They paid three billion dollars to keep from being able to have to release their, their gesture code. So they thought it was worth at least three billion to keep it secret. Um, Microsoft has it, Corel has it. Asus actually released theirs for a couple weeks and then they were like looking around and said, oh crap, there's money in this and pulled it all back and started suing everybody who was trying to use it. A couple other, other interesting stories with that, but there really isn't or wasn't until FX apparently any open source um, touch things for Java. So I had to stick a bumper sticker on this when I did my preview to the Admiral. He was like, that page needs a bumper sticker. So that's my bumper sticker. I don't know what, why I needed one, but yeah. So let's see. So the next thing that we're going to talk about is, is gesture meaning mapping. So there really isn't an agreed upon standard yet. Sort of the iPhone and the Google. How many people have an iPhone? How many people have a droid phone? Does anybody have both? I have both at my office. They work differently. Some things that you do on one don't work the same on the other. The same exact gesture that you would expect to do the same exact thing, it does different things. Um, iPhone and the droids, they're the two big players right now. But they don't have an agreed upon standard. There isn't one. This is a problem because 
people are, are expecting whatever they use the most. So people who use the iPhone, when they go to use a, a product, they expect it to work the way that the iPhone works. People who use the Droid expect the opposite. They expect what the, the way the Droid does it. So we're, we're studying this, and I'll get to a little bit more about that in a bit. Let's talk about what makes a gesture. So there's a lot of different variables that go into a gesture. For instance, you have direction, which includes changes in direction. For example, if I'm, if I'm just going this way, then you have that direction, but what if I go like this? That's a whole bunch of directions that I just did. Velocity, as, as we all know, this is a drag, this is a flick. What's the difference? I've I accelerated and then came to a sudden deceleration. That is the only difference between a drag and a flick. So velocity is important. We have starting and ending locations. We need to know where it started, where it ended for those types of, for, for making sure we're doing it to the right thing and such. And you need to know how long it took. What, where, what time did it start? What time did it end? And then you have to have a tolerance for deviation. Um, so as we already discussed, I work on weapons. And have you guys, tried using a, a smartphone while off-roading, anyone? Yeah, we have. We put them in the back of seats on vehicles that I can't really talk about, but let's just say they go really fast, make loud booms, and go off-road a lot. Well, the people in the back seats trying to use those, trying to use gestures, they need a much higher tolerance than what somebody sitting at a desk would need because they're bouncing all over the place trying to touch a touch screen. So tolerances are also important. If it's multi-touch, you have to have two or more of, of each of these. So it starts to get kind of complex. All right, so now let me talk about this tool. I did create this tool. I found this tool. This tool was made by uh, somebody in Germany, a company in Germany. I think it's actually one guy. Is the creator here by any chance? No, okay, just wondering. Um, it's a great tool. It, what, it, what he made it for, my understanding is, is he made it for games. He wanted to be able to do games with touch. And so he designed it for games to be able to get the inputs from, your, from your, the screen to, to Java. Um, the way that it works is it treats each, each point of contact like a mouse, like a mouse pointer. So basically it keeps track of all these different mice pointers, or you write the code rather, to keep track of all these different mice pointers. This just changes the touch output to mice pointer input so that you can easily manipulate it. You have to have a tool like this if you're going to write Java, unless of course you're using JavaFX. I don't know how they do it yet. So this, this tool is very important. It's, it's been very handy. I'm very appreciative of it. I had nothing to do with it. I don't get any money for promoting it. Um, but it's, I'm, th I'm very thankful that, that they created this. It's made my job a lot easier. And anybody out there who wants to create gestures is the first place they should go, mt4j.org. Uh, they have desktop touchscreen stuff completed. They have a beta for, for Android phones. There will never be an iPhone one because Apple doesn't allow it. Apple says uh, no. So... You can go there and you can play with it. The iPhone 1 works pretty great. I've played around with it. Even though it's just a beta version, it actually works quite well. If anybody has any questions, don't be afraid to stop and ask. Okay, so let's, let's look at creating a gesture at the actual nuts and bolts to it. So some examples come with MT4J. This is not one of them. However, I used one of the examples that came with it. It comes with the drag. It does not come with the flick. They did not write flick code in. They just wrote drag code in. So I guess they didn't need to flick anything in the games that he wrote. So as we, as we talked about earlier, what's the difference between a drag and a flick? Well, as, as I said, the difference is in a drag, you're going at a steady speed from one point to another. Uh, the only difference between that and a flick is you're accelerating. Your velocity is increasing. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the flick to the drag. It's really easy to do. It's only a couple lines of code, which is why I picked it. So I didn't want to blow anybody's mind. And 
I didn't have a lot of time to go into a lot of the more complex ones. You can do a lot more complex things in this, but we'll just start here. All right, so first off, there's only three methods that they have for the drag. The first one is cursor started. As I mentioned, we need to know exactly where, where we start at. It's called cursor started because as I mentioned, the MT4J tool converts touches to cursors, to mouse pointers, essentially. So when, once you touch the screen, this basically kicks it off and says, hey, I'm starting a gesture and let's see where it goes. Then we have cursor updated, which is the main meat of it. And then once you lift your finger off, it's cursor ended, which makes sense, right? They all make sense in what they do. So once you, once you close the gesture, then you're done. So the only thing we need to change actually is the cursor updated, but we'll look at the code for the other two as well. So let's start with, hopefully it's readable. Let's start with the cursor started code. Um, it, it looks messy. There's, there's, it's not really well commented. This is actually the code from MT4J, unedited. Um, it, you, you can see what it does though if you, if you spend enough time and look at it. It's pretty easy to, to tell what's going on here. So I'm not going to spend my time going line by line through this part. So we can see what happens here. Um, we're basically just starting the, the, uh, the gesture. So this is where we end the gesture. This is the code for ending it. Again, unedited. I didn't modify this at all. It's the drag code for for, uh, that came with MT4J and this just lets us know that we stopped the gesture. Give everybody a couple minutes to look it over. Alrighty, so now let's get to the good stuff. So this is actually the, the entire update one. This will do either a drag or a flick. The drag code is, I'm colorblind so I hope it's red. I think it's supposed to be red. The edited code is red. That's the part I added for a, uh, for a, a to change a drag to a flick. The other stuff is what was there ahead of time. So what did I do? Well essentially I just said, um, I got a vector and said, hey, if, this, if the velocity vector gets higher than, than this minimum velocity, then it's a flick. It's not a, it's not a drag any longer. Makes sense, right? Because we're, if it's a drag, we're going at a slow, steady speed. If it's a flick, we're going to be accelerating. So at some point, we're going to hit a minimum threshold that says, hey, I've been accelerating. And actually, the minimum velocity also can be gotten from the, um, the start where you take a snapshot at the start. I have a lot more complex code than this for other things, but this is just easy to show. So, so by using the velocity vector, we can see how fast, how fast the finger's going. We can see where it's at. Um, does anybody have any questions about this? I mean, it's pretty straightforward, actually. It's, it's fairly easy to do to get started in, in gestures is really easy. Doing things like this, it's pretty straightforward. It's not really all that complex. It seems pretty daunting, but it really isn't. And you can do amazing things with it. And you can patent those amazing things. And, and sue, oh wait, that's Apple. Never mind. Or you could baby sue Apple, or you could sue Google. Sue whoever you want. Make your gestures first. Hey, Apple got three billion. Three billion's a good chunk of change, I'm thinking. I got three patents. All righty. So, let's talk a little bit, a little bit about the research that we're doing. And actually, it's, it's when we get into the HS, HSI part, you guys, I think, are going to really find this interesting. Um, so, as I said, I, I did a project. It's called IAR, which stands for Independent Applied Research. I spend about four hours a day, basically half my day working on this. Um, it's being written for Java, it's intended for Java, and it will be open source when I'm done with it. I'll be releasing it to everybody. 
we want to benefit the, the community at large. We want to make you guys feel comfortable that, that our tax dollars are going to uh, great causes. So the Navy also uses touchscreens on some of its systems, and we want to be able to add gestures to those systems without having to buy proprietary hardware. So what are the goals? To develop a standard library of human system integration approved gestures, to make it easier to generate new gestures, and to make the library available for use. So now we're getting into some of the HSI research. Um, this is where my, my head shrinks come in. And basically what they did is they, they took about 200 individuals of different walks of lives, sat them down with, at, at a, a smartphone and a large touch display, and they asked them to do different things, different tasks. It was just a blank screen on both sides, and they said, for example, in this case, go back, go back a page. How would you do that? And they had to, without any prompting, so show how they would, they would go back a page using a gesture. Why is this important? Well, if if a lot of people do the same thing, then it's going to be natural and instinctive for people to do that. If you get a high group of, of people all doing the same exact thing, then that's what the gesture should be for that task. If it's all over the place, then that's going to be a hard gesture to make because nobody's going to know it. And it's hard to get tutorials for gestures because they, they don't really have a button or a, a little question mark you can push. People got to kind of know the gestures. You can train them, which a lot of us have been trained by, this, by our smartphones, but really what do we do on our smartphone? If you think about it, we tap, we drag, we flick, and we pinch, and we spread. That's what most of us do. That's it, if you think about it. However, our smartphones can do a lot more gestures than that, but most of us don't even know because they're not intuitive and... No, but there's no way to train us how to do it. So, for example, with the back one, on, it turns out that it's different on the devices. It's usually somewhat the same. But 15% said that to go back, you should do a flick. 23% thought it should be a single tap somewhere. And 62% thought it should be a swipe, which is a drag. The, those head shrinks, they just they don't like the word drag, so they change it to to sh to swipe for some reason. On a cell phone, to go back, people thought you should do a line, which is also a drag. Like I said, they're funny people and they're always analyzing my head. 23% um, that said that you should point. So that's, that's just like, I don't even know how people try to do it, but like a short drag is the way that they explained it to me. 5% actually did a sideways V, so a less than sign to go back. Pretty creative, I thought, you know, because these are people that, that have, don't have experience with smartphones, and they were like, well, if I wanted to go back, I would probably want a, an arrow or something, so they did a sideways V. So I'm going to show you a bunch of, of the results that we got on the next slide, but really quick, I want to talk about how they are. If it's favorable, that means that a lot of people did the same thing. If it's reasonable, that means some people did the same thing. And if it's unfavorable, that means people were all over the place. So here it is. Hopefully we can read it. It's a lot of information on one slide. It's actually two columns. Um, I'm sorry, this is the way my head shrinks gave it to me. I tried to get them to give it to me another, in another form, but they didn't in time for me to turn this in for public release. Now, the interesting thing here is look at back. These are actually ordered in the order of how, of how congruent they are. Look at back. It's almost at the bottom of the first column. It's near the middle. Now, I'm going to come back to this slide, but let me go back to this slide. With back, we saw 62% did the same thing on a touchscreen, 72 on a, on a uh, mobile device. And that is not reasonable. They did a whole formula. My head shrinks came up with the whole formula and all this stuff, which I couldn't show because the public release people wouldn't let me. They're mean like that. And um, 
We will show it though. We're going to release all of this finding, all of this research, at the end of 13, in a year from now, basically. But back is uh, is near the bottom. So what was favorable? Pan. Almost everybody did the same thing for pan. Moving an item. That's simple. Everybody knows how to move an item, right? So what's funny? I got to actually, they, they didn't want me in the room because they thought I would spoil it, but I got to watch video of some of the tests. The, the cut, every single person did something different. 200 people did something different. No two people did the same thing for cut. Think about that. Think, of, think to yourself, how would you do a, cut, a gesture for cut? Cut something we do a lot. What would you do? I have no clue what I would do, and I've done tons of gestures. I've been working on gestures for a while. I thought that was extremely interesting. Every single person did something different for cut. Some people put their fingers on the screen and did scissor motions. <laughs> Some people did pinches. Some people did circles, but every single person did something different. Some people s struck it out. It's crazy. Um, again, all of this research and how exactly the exact digits will be released in a year and uh, they will be for public consumption. Maybe I'll even get to come back and, and share them next year here. Copy was also not very well. A lot of people, there were like maybe five or six people that did the same thing with copy. It's just not intuitive. But these are, these are tasks that we do a lot. So what does this mean? Somebody needs to make a gesture for cut and copy for these things on the bottom and start training us how to do these. And if you do, patent it and sue Google and Oracle. I mean, Google and uh, Apple. Don't sue Oracle. That's, forget I said that. That's bad. Um, so make yourself a couple billion, you know? Good stuff. But these are, these are seriously cut and copy. Who doesn't cut and copy? I do it all the time. I was doing it when I was trying to get this presentation up today. I had to do it to get something on the, on the drive to make this available for you guys later. We cut and copy all the time. But there's no, je no, no known gestures to do that that people recognize. So let's look at some of the other ones that, that I think are pretty funny. Undo, save. These are things that we use a lot. Also extremely unfavorable. Even redo, um, closing an app. You would think closing an app would be more favorable, but it's not. People did, tons of people did different things. There was very little congruence. The things that, that are favorable are uh, switching to the next app, switching to a previous app, moving an item as I said. Catch actually did pretty good, so I'm not sure exactly what catch means. I tried asking them and they explained it to me in, in um, psychology, psychology ease, which I don't speak, but they think I do. So they, uh, because I'm their boss, they think I should know psychology ease. And they, they like to talk to me that way. And then I, when I say English, English, they get upset with me. But anyways, um, so does anybody have any questions about any of these? Yes. Why? You could just put a big button on a screen, but you know, with, with screen sizes and, and things, we don't always have room for that kind of stuff. Um, actually, that's actually an excellent question. Think about a menu bar. Think about a menu bar. This is one of the things that I discovered was really bad and actually trying to save stuff did not work well on a touch screen without gestures. When you touch a menu bar, things drop down. It works fine with, with getting it to drop down. You want to hit the save in that drop down file menu? Good luck. Good freaking luck. You will almost never get it. In fact, I can demonstrate it on this when we're done with the presentation. You will always get the one below it or above it. Never fails. Even happens to me on my cell phone. So that's why the menu bar needs to go away for touch screens. Menu bars are completely ineffective. But there's no gesture yet to do a lot of the things that we do on the menu. There isn't. There's no gesture for save. 
that's that's widely recognizable. There's no gesture for undo, redo, all of the things that we normally get exit on a menu bar. They just don't exist there. And I say there's big money and people who invent the gestures. Yes. So I, I use a program called Stroke It. I, I swear that's the name of it. And it, uh, it remembers your gestures in more. Right. Right. So do you feel like there are different schools of thought about whether we should focus on standards so that the computers are telling us how to do it or that approach where the computer is learning how I want to do it? That's an excellent question and there, there are actually different schools of thought on that. Um, and I personally believe that it should be both. We should be able to customize our gestures but there should be a standard. So. This laptop actually does the same thing. I can make my own gestures if I want to open Guild Wars 2 because I like playing Guild Wars 2. I could make a gesture to open Guild Wars 2 and it will only do that. Um, so there, there are things out there that do stuff like that. Getting it into an actual program, the gesture inside the program, that's a little bit harder and that's where, where this stuff comes in. But yes, it's, it is great to be able to to create your own gestures and I'm actually working on trying to get that in Java. I wasn't supposed to tell you that though so please don't tell the government I told you that. Um, and if I succeed that will be released as well. Yes. Right. 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 They're single touch. Yes, you can use this as single touch. I like I said. The government always 10 years behind. 10 years ago there weren't so many multi touch screens. So seriously I have two single touch screens, a multi touch screen and this laptop that's multi touch. And I have a bunch of iPads and phones and stuff like that that they let me buy and, and yelled at me saying why are you getting so many toys? But anyways, they w I work mostly on the single touch stuff for when I do actual government integration of this. And yes, you, there are solutions. The, the flick is the, is the obvious one that I use for that. Um, it's through this study, it's what everybody expects to work when you're trying to scroll stuff. A flick works great. A drag also if you want to go more slow. So you would want to integrate drag and flick into that and that, but those are both single touch gestures. They don't require multi touch. Right. That's an excellent question and I actually, I actually tested that. I was worried about that. I was like what kind of performance am I going to get? So I, I plugged one of my single touch touch screens into a 486 laptop because the government doesn't like to throw stuff away so we have a lot of these things laying around. In fact we never throw stuff away. We blow it up. It's a long story. But um, I'm serious. When we're done with our laptops, we take them all out, put them in a pit, throw explosives in there, and blow them up. It's it's all kinds of fun, but it's less than than productive. But we just happen to have 486, and I'm talking. This thing was so old when I when I accidentally tilted it sideways, the hard drive slid out and fell on the floor. And I was like, I'm not even sure this thing's gonna work. But I plugged it in, plugged my my touchscreen monitor into it, ran some code. I saw no performance hit from doing touchscreen. Into that into that laptop, there was and it doesn't get much slower than that these days. So um, it actually turns out that that touch screens send it fairly fast, and and the the receiver thinks it's just mice. So especially with the single touch, it's no slower than using a mouse. 
So you really don't have a, a hit in performance. And some of the multi-touch, if you want to get really crazy and have like graphics and particle effects, which I have done, you can get, you can get slow. You can make it slow if you want to, but you got to try. So any more questions about this table? I'll move on to the rest of the presentation. All right. So what are, what are we going to do? What are my, um, my head shrinks working on for me? They're going to make a style guide which is a list of standard gestures that are available in the, in the library that I'll be releasing, the API that I'll be releasing, and they'll recommend where you use them. So we'll kind of try to have a standard. So it'll be all the gestures that I've created or received or whatever and where we think through studies on, on human beings they should be used. We will we'll try to encourage standards while still allowing for novel gesture use, like, like you said. It's important that, that you have that, that you let people make their own. So what do, we, what do you plan to do in the future? Well, we want to assess gesture function relationships. So look at things like form factor, interaction styles, and specific scenarios or task sets. Things like a replacement for the menu bar. There needs to be a replacement for the menu bar because we can't have that anymore. Um, we want to compare the effectiveness of specific gestures in relation to specific functions and we want to do ergonomic assessment. We already have done some of that. It turns out that if you have a wall, a touch screen like you said you have a wall, if you have a wall if you use it for a long time you get something called gorilla arm and that's because your, your arm from using it so much feels so freaking heavy that it feels like you're dragging it. So hence the term gorilla arm. It also turns out that having it a surface flat in front of you like you would with a, with a pad on a table is not the best way either. The best way is actually to have it at about this angle, at about a 35 degree angle in front of you. Um, and our ergonomic research has, has found that if you do that, you actually, it's actually less strained to use a touch screen than it is a keyboard. But if you think about it, keyboards are, are bad, they give you carpal tunnel and all that, all kinds of stuff. If you do a, a touch screen at the right angle, you won't get carpal tunnel. So, and there's tons of other advantages. I could talk about advantages to touch screens all day. Um, one of the key ones is you don't have to take your eyes off the data. Because I work for the government and as I said, people use this stuff when they're under fire. We don't want them taking their eyes off the target to, to move stuff. And even though I've been typing and coding for years, when I, when I code on a keyboard, I look at my fingers. And then I look up and see all the mistakes I made. I don't know how you guys are, but I'm guessing soldiers are not touch typists either. Especially when they're wearing gloves and stuff. So it's important that we have them be able to keep their, the data and their interaction with the data all in the same field of view, which touch screens allows. All right, so what can you guys do? Make some gestures. Um, make some gestures and send it to the MT4J crew. I used to have my email on here, but last year when I did this presentation, somebody from a foreign country that is, doesn't like the US started sending me bad emails. So that email got shut down and I can't give my email out anymore. But you could probably find it if you look really hard. Oracle has it. Shh, don't tell you I said that. All right, so this is, uh, yeah, please make some gestures. And like I said, get them patented. It's, it's great. There's, there's tons of room out there still for patenting gestures. I've already patented three. Um, I'm hoping that Oracle or Google uses them so that Uncle Sam can get lots of money from because I don't get my own patents. I have to pat file it through the government. So does that, are there any other government workers in here that know what I'm talking about? Oh, so you guys know exactly what, I'm, what I deal with on a daily basis. So yeah. Um, do it. Send it to MT4J. Take a look at the MT4J project. It hasn't been updated in a while, I'll admit. It was like April of 2011 when it was last updated. But I have a feeling if he gets enough emails, he might get a get hopping on it again, but it's actually pretty complete as is. There's, uh, there's some places there where you 
you can at, ask questions and, and stuff and look at forums. So take a look at that page. It's uh, mt4j.org. So real quick, I just want to give some thanks. I want to thank the Navy for letting me do this. Um, it's great to be paid to play. It's a lot of fun. I really like it. Um, but it is work. It is hard work. And please don't think I'm like the GSA. I do like coming to conferences, but I don't drink. So it's, I'm not here for the, the party stuff, and I'm not going to be running down the halls singing any songs or anything like that. Um, but they do, the Navy it was gracious enough to let me do this, and a large part of the reason why they agreed on this, the, one of the key selling points is because I told them that I wanted to make it public release. And we have a big PR problem right now, so that was like, hey, this would be good PR if we made this and send it out. And that was one of the deciding factors on why I got the money and, and other, other people didn't. So I'm really thankful for them for giving me this chance. I'm, I'm really thankful to MT4J, as I've said in the past, my coworkers who've helped out in various ways, my employees, um, Oracle for letting me speak here for the second time, and to all of you for coming and staying till the end. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, I do have a fact. That's right. Let's see. I have two different facts. One for one I give for government people and one I give for uh, regular people. So where do I see this going? Well, mice and keyboards are, are going to be history. They're already clearing out space next to typewriters and museums to put a keyboard and mouse. It's inevitable. We're all moving to touch screens. We have so many touch screens in our lives. All of us have smartphones. Many of us have, have pads. There's touch screens everywhere. You can't, you can't get your money out of a bank without touching one. There's touch screens in cars. There's touch screens everywhere. Most of us don't even realize how much we interact with touch screens. The days of the keyboard and mouse are gone. You can already get laptops like mine that don't have a keyboard. Um, it doesn't. You can come up and look if you want to see, if you don't believe me. And it, they're going to be gone. So we need this. We need gestures. So I already talked about the hardware thing, question that somebody had. Am I enjoying this? Yes, I love this. This is fun. This is more cutting edge than my usual work, which is 10 years behind the technology curve. So this is great stuff. I'm, I'm having a lot of fun. Yes. Okay. Right. Right. That's a great question. And actually, right. And and actually, that that is that already has been um, been tested out. Um, how how many of you have heard of Swipe? You've heard of Swipe. So Swipe came with some of the Droid phones early on, and I think it's back now. Um, with Swipe, you don't ever lift your finger to type. You use one finger. You don't ever lift it, except for when you want to stop words. So you do a whole word, lift your finger to, to do a space. And actually, they did a study, or we did a study with Swipe. We gave it to a bunch of college-age kids um, that hadn't used it before. And we... we gave it to them and, and tested them. First we tested them on their typing speed on the keyboard and they all did decent but not great, you know, because they were college kids. And uh, we gave them a swipe phone and tested them right after we gave it to them. They did horrible, horrible. Their, their typing speed was way down. So we, had them, we let them keep them and had them come back three weeks later and most of them were right about where they were with typing in three weeks. So we were like, well, that's interesting. So two, week, two months after that, we brought them back in, and every single one of them was swiping faster than they ever typed. Every one of them. Um, I heard somewhere, I don't know if it's true or not, that somebody using swipe actually broke the typing word count speed record using swipe. So yes, there will be new ways of interacting. They will be probably a lot faster, more efficient, and more natural because the keyboard's really. Right. Right. 
Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. And uh, there, there is another issue, though, that that brings up. A lot of people have a hard time adjusting to the lack of a haptic response. A haptic response is you feel the keys. You feel them press in. And some keys have bumps on it, like the G and the H or something like that. Um, so you lose that when you go to a touchscreen. Well, sort of. They actually have invented touchscreens where buttons come out of the screen. It's really freaky. Um, and it, it breaks down a lot. So I don't recommend going out and getting one because they're super expensive. The, the, the Marines have one, and they let me play with it for a couple hours one day. It was a lot of fun. But um, this is an issue. The haptic response is an issue. On most touchscreens, they, they try to replace it with clicking sounds and such. But the haptic response is something that we will have to get past. But it seems like as we're getting more and more used to not having the haptic response, it's actually not that big of a deal. So a lot of people are, are turning out to be just fine. Some say they could never do it without the haptic response. But most people actually get along OK without it. So are there any other questions? Yes. Right. So, for example, a lot of times there's a thing you want to write down the screen, something slides out, and so forth. Uh, any, any research done into identifying that there is a gesture available? That's, that's why we did that, that, um, that table that I showed earlier. That's why we did that, to find out what's intuitive, because we, we looked at that and we discovered that, as I said earlier, there really is no way to, to have a... Uh, a help tutorial or whatever. I mean, you can force people to do one when they first start it up, but they hate that because, no, let's be honest, when you buy something new and shiny, the first thing you do is not, I want to I ha I be forced to do this stupid tutorial. You want to get in and play, and then they forget how to open the tutorial, and they never, ever go back to it. So that doesn't really work that well. Um, there really isn't a great way to get a help for gestures because they don't have a visual cue. They don't exist visually. So the, the way that we're trying to do that is to dis discover what's natural for all of the different gestures and just have it be intuitive for people to do it. Um, as, as my slide showed, for some of them like cut and copy, we're a long way off. As I said with cut, every single person did something different. Every single one. We had no two people do the same thing. Out of 200 people, that's pretty amazing. There were 200 different gestures for cut out of 200. So yes, this is a huge problem. Do I know how to solve it? No, I don't, not yet. I'm sorry. Maybe next year. I'll get my shrinks right on it. I'll call them up later today. I need to anyways. So they hate it when I call them shrinks too, but I pay their bills, so they get by. Any other questions? Nope. Oh, all right. Thanks for coming.